Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Jason and this is the other Jason. What's Jason up, guys? Smith from Hobo Forge Survival and we are on his property right now, where his training grounds. And we are discussing some of the, the top skills that will help keep you alive. Top skills to make you harder to kill, perhaps. I grew up uh, reading survival books. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to watch all the survival shows. I wanted to be out there in the wild, and I, from early on, I wanted to be—I wanted to become harder to kill. That was my goal when I was a kid. Yeah. I, I want to be harder to kill, and typically, I focused on you know Mother Nature and the elements, and you know not freezing to death and starting the fires and stuff. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of progressed into uh, thinking more about the human element because humans are the most dangerous animal Absolutely. on the face of the earth. Absolutely. Uh, so now I'm a little bit more focused on that as a because I feel like I've 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 never made it. I, I'm not an expert on anything. I'll, I'm the first to tell you that I, I'm not the expert. If you're here to find all the answers to all of your questions, you're in the wrong spot. Uh, but I'm learning. I'm always learning. But I feel like I've, I've progressed enough in my wilderness survival type skills where I can advance and move on to some other things. And, and as I was um, talking to Jason today, we're, uh, we're discussing kind of what are our, our top priorities maybe for someone that maybe hasn't arrived in the, the wilderness survival skills they haven't they haven't gotten to the point maybe where we are yet right as far as owning those skills what are some of the top skills that we would recommend people start to work on start to um start to progress with and, and just get more more confident with when we're talking about becoming harder to kill whether that's from mother nature like i said or from two-legged foes yeah 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 jason i feel like um you know if i was going to start out with like one skill that i really feel um, that people need to focus on right out of the box would be something that's near and dear to your heart. And that's the physicality of, of their life, right? The ability to move through life, whether you're in the woods, uh, moving through the woods or just moving in and amongst your peers in, <clears throat> in your current job or current situation, wherever you geographically live, your physical fitness and ability to, to move and do things, uh, in a functional way, uh, really is probably my top top thing for uh, being harder to kill, and I know that that deeply resonates with you and how you you promote your uh, your lifestyle, which is very much very much uh, building a I don't even want to call it a workout. It's like a functional day, you know, and you you build some type of exercise into your everyday uh, everyday uh, chores, if you will. So right. I think I think starting out with uh, with the, the, the physical aspect of, of, of uh, your life is a great start point for being harder to kill. I think people spend more time on Amazon buying gear than they do investing. Because it's easy. Yeah, because it's easy. They don't want to invest physically into themselves yeah. and give themselves a, a better chance of surviving uh, in the woods. You know, if they're physically, you know, in shape, they're going to have a better chance in this environment. Because as you physically become stronger, your mental is going to become stronger as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I agree with you on that one. I think physical fitness is probably, if it's not number one, it is, it's extremely high on the list because uh, uh, with that becomes confidence. You know, you get, you become a more confident individual. You carry yourself. Self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. your self-esteem becomes higher. And people notice that. And because you're a more confident individual, you carry yourself better, and you're more, you're l much, much less likely to be targeted as some sort of victim. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. And, and because you are physically fit and carry yourself well. You carry yourself and, more like a predator. Yeah, and I know people don't want to hear that because it's, because it requires a huge investment in time and energy and effort. But does it? Well, yeah, well, well that's the conception, right? That's, right. that's what people, that's what people assume is it takes a huge amount of of time and it really doesn't my workouts i i train train three times a week and it typically doesn't even last a half an hour right so uh, i mean i'm a physically active guy and i'm always doing stuff but i don't train more than about three times a week and honestly you can achieve elite levels of fitness with very little gear yeah and minimal time requirements well i think i think in a lot of ways too i don't think you wake up and say uh i'm gonna I'm specifically going to go train today. No. I think yeah, you yeah. wake up and you say, I have to do these things today 
how do I fit training into those things? Right. Because now I'm accomplishing kind of two goals. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and that's a that's a big part is you don't need a gym membership. People get in their own yeah. way. They yeah. really do physically. Yeah. Um, I don't have the right shoes. I can't. Yep. I can't work out. Yeah. I'm not part of the I'm right traveling. gym. I'm traveling. I'm on the road. Sure. I, I don't have my workout gear. Just like honestly, you don't need any. You don't need any space. You don't need any equipment. Right. You need nothing. <laughs> you need the the, the, the <laughs> desire to be what? the discipline. Yeah, the yeah. discipline to yeah. actually execute. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think that the uh, that the uh, the physicality part of what you're promoting really is the hook in which uh, people need to appreciate. You know, because that that's where it all begins. From there, you're going to think clearer. You're going to be more uh, more conscious of your environment. Less likely to be injured. Very much yeah. less likely to be injured. Um, you're going to be more confident about. Well, I'm going to I'm going to take that route versus this route. You know, you're not going to take the the easy over the hard, so to speak. Um, because you're going to be more confident in your ability and it's going to cause you to think more out of the box and, you know, with more ability comes less need for dependence upon gear or other people or systems and things of that sort, which all may be absent. And that's kind of what we're talking about. When those systems are absent, you know, all you're left with is you and what you're capable of. So, you know, when you can't rely on gear and you can't lean on those crutches of gear, what are you left with? You're left with, uh, you know, you, you, man. So, so <laughs> build, it. build, build the best you. And yeah. I think that's what you're, that's what you're trying to do and show. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to appreciate that more, uh, from a standpoint of like ease of accomplishment. Yeah. Right? It, it's like the low investment. I mean, the guy's running up and down a hill in rubber boots, that's it. you know, I mean, <laughs> right. It's my, my EDC footwear. <laughs> yeah, here. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, yeah. So what's our, what's going to be our, our second one? I think uh, second one's going to be uh, mental toughness or intestinal fortitude, you know, from psych from a psychological standpoint. But I think if you if you're focused on the first one, which is physically fit, then you're building disciplines and you're um, and you're getting tough. Yeah, yeah, you're getting tough. So it's like you buy one, you get one for free. Yeah. So you get, buy one, get one. <laughs> yeah, you That's buy great. Yeah, you buy one, you get number two for free. Yeah, uh, so. yeah. Mental toughness, just a positive kind of can-do attitude. I, I, I mean, that is that's right there at the top because. Without that, you are really going to struggle. And I've, I've always said, I will take the, the can-do guy, the positive mindset guy that knows nothing yeah. over the expert right. that's just pissed about life. Right. Because right. you can't work with that. You can't, it brings, the, it brings everybody down. Yeah. Um, but if you've got a positive mindset that says, you know what, I don't know how to do this thing, but I'm going to figure it out. That's right. Yeah. That's if you've right. got that mindset, you will figure it out. Yeah, you, absolutely, <laughs> you, you absolutely will. Yeah. And when the, the mental uh, mental toughness, intestinal fortitude piece, I think that comes through challenging yourself for things that you, you should always put something on your calendar you don't think you can achieve. Yeah. You know, and then you should, you should train for that thing and then go do that thing. Mm -hmm. And then and maybe you fail. Don't give yourself an out. <laughs> yeah. The certain yeah. way, a certain way to fail is to yeah. give yourself an out. Yeah. Don't give yourself an out. But don't don't do something that is so astronomically hard that you feel like you have to give yourself an out before you even do it. Right. So do something difficult, something yeah. that's out of your wheelhouse, yeah. and accomplish that thing. Even if it's something so simple as spending the night in the woods, you've never done that before. Yeah. Go build that mental toughness of sitting in the woods at night, you know, mm -hmm. and and the confidence, and then it builds and it yeah. builds and it builds. So you don't have to start out with a thirty day no food, no water you know, excursion into yeah. the woods. It can be very simple. Although you could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Probably not recommended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, he, and you can only build that kind of toughness um, by doing. Right. I, you can't learn that. You, right. can't, uh, you, can't, you can't read a book and have it. Uh, you could read all the books you want on building mental fortitude, but you're never going to have it unless you go do That's it, right, that's right. right. Yeah, so you have to, yeah. you have to take that new, newfound discipline and physicality and then say, I'm going to take this now to the next level. And I'm going to do something that challenges me both physically and mentally. Yeah. Because that's where you're going to be challenged the most. What, what's what's some, this would be good. People like to hear about like personal stuff that you've yeah. done. What's something really challenging that you've had to go through um, that helped you become much more mentally tough? Sure. Well, my whole military career was built upon, upon hard stuff, right? So ranger school, SF selection, scuba school, you know, it all, everything is challenging, scary. Everything was done in the rain, in the dark, you know, in the cold. And, um, so I think the army was the vehicle in which I traveled and, 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 and achieved and was, was blessed with the, the, uh, ability and the desire, 
and this is, that was something we talked about yesterday was that what, what, what is your desire to do these things where well, you crave that mm-hmm. you know once you've challenged yourself at that at that level and then you come out of the other side stronger smarter faster um you know more hardened psychologically now you're you're thirsty it's like a drug man you don't mm-hmm. want to let that go because you know how good it is for you the hard part is as life moves on, finding the time to wedge that into your everyday life. It's easy to say these things got in the way and, and right. whatnot, you know? So I feel like, um, you know, as, as most people know, we were both on Alone the Beast and, you know, going to that show was something I, I really wanted to do to showcase the primitive skills that I had. But I remember being on that show and being asked many times during the thing, it's like, are you uh you you thinking about tapping out? You thinking about tapping out? And I remember thinking. I remember thinking. What? If you think if you think this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you I, are mistaken. You are mistaken. Yeah. You know, but yeah. uh, but you know, I think I drew upon a lot of aspects of of my life in which I found things much harder yeah. and and hardened me, and I think that gave me the the yeah. confidence to yeah to board that yeah, and I, I think one of the things that that experience was was eye opening for me because. Yeah, one of the things that I learned, probably one of the most important things that I learned was um, doing what's necessary now and taking care of that thing now and not worrying about what happens tomorrow. Right. All I got to do is make it through today. That's right. I make it through today and then we'll talk about tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. That tactic of, of focusing on the now and not worrying about all of the problems that I have yes. was really, really helpful for me. And it's an it's enabled me to do more and more and more challenging things after that fact, right? That, yeah, so, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And that, then not just survival related stuff, just life. Well, that's because, a huge point. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. life yeah. is overwhelming sometimes yeah. because there's so much stuff going on, and, and people are sick, and you know, dad's in the hospital, and I broke my leg, and and I just got lost my job, or all these things can be overwhelming. But what do you have to do right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm tough enough to take care of this right now. We'll worry about the rest of the things right. after that. No, yeah. that's such a that's such a great point to to think about because in that environment everything's stripped down, but you're so psychologically driven to worry about next week, next month, next year, and plan for those things because you have children, you have a wife, you have a husband, you have kids, you got you have this, you got problems, you got bills, you got. Well, when you're out here, I don't have any of those things. Yeah, I don't need bills it's out very here. Very simple. Yeah, I don't have any bills. The only Just bill don't, I, don't die. Don't die, man. The only, <laughs> like, you see my breath. Yeah. You know, the only bill yeah. I have is the, the the cost of starting a fire. What's that's, that going to cost that's me? That's right. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. I mean, that's a that's a fantastic point of how you're you know we're we're stuck in that psychological uh, conundrum of always worrying about tomorrow when out here tomorrow will take care of itself. Yeah. Like tomorrow's problem. I don't even know if I'm going to make it through today. Yeah. Like, so if I'm focused all on tomorrow, then I'm missing aspects of today that I really need to, um, I really need to focus on to make tomorrow more successful. Right. That's right. So hyper focus on the now and let the, let, let tomorrow take care of itself. That's right. That's a great point. Yeah. Even Jesus says, Jesus says, uh, uh, don't worry about tomorrow, you know, t- today's, today has enough problems, you know. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. I think number three should be uh, value living. You know, remember, you know, you think about keyword survival, uh, V, one of the V's in keyword survival is value living. And that's understanding that you have something to live for, whether that's family or God or um, whatever, whatever it is. I what's think, your why? Yeah, what's why your why? Survive? Yeah, exactly. Why survive? Yeah. Why survive? That's the thing. Yeah, that why, why survive? survive yeah, in why the not first just? Place? Why, yeah, why not just give up? Why not just lay down and die? You know, hypothermia is not a bad way to go. No, to be honest with you, like if I was gonna, I'm not. I've never thought about committing suicide. I've never considered it. But if I was going to, just go to some place cold, lay down, go to sleep. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, you just fall asleep. <laughs> that's man. it. It's a it's a pretty easy way to go. But yeah. the reason that people survive in really really tough situations and conditions is because they have a reason to survive. They they want to survive for some reason. Yeah. And for everybody, that might be a little bit different. Sure. I, I know why I want to survive. I want to get back to the people that I love. Yeah. Right? I feel like I have a, a, a big purpose in this world. I I want to do awesome things, and I want to share it with as many people as I can. And I, I can't die yet because I'm not done. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. I mean, yeah. uh you know, value living and having something to live for will carry you a long way. Yeah. Uh, in the absence of skills, in the absence of hardened psychology, just having something bigger than yourself uh, can 
can carry you through. I mean, it really can. I mean, and we, as we stand out here in these woods, you know, and you look around, I mean, this place is absolutely beautiful and it's, uh, we're in awe of, of how, of the beauty and, and what this, what this brings to bear. So as I stand out here and I look around, you know, uh, you know, I'm humbled by the, by the environment I stand in and, and the, the beauty and the danger that exists out here and is kind of harmonious with each other. Right. And it's like, you can exist out here and, and you can suffer or you can exist out here and thrive. And it all comes down to how you perceive your situation and your skill set and your psychology and you know all those things and i just really want people to experience that level of kind of enlightenment if you will is coming out to a situation like this and putting them in challenging situations where they get to they get to grow as a human being and then they get to think about you know because while they're out here suffering in some event they may they're thinking about their family they're thinking about going going home and, and when they get home they're you know, they're excited to share that, you know, and that, and that, that level of, uh, experience and gratitude uh, about coming out of the other end successful with something yeah. is, is very intoxicating to yeah. share with people. So, yeah, that I, I, I always talk about that too, especially when we're talking about, uh, preparedness, prepping all the things, you know, the bunkers and the stockpiling of foods and all that without people that you love and care for and people that depend on you and rely on you what's the point? It's, that's like, exactly right. Why are you doing that? Just go nomadic. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah just be a vag wandering vagabond <laughs> yeah. hobo, yeah, hobo and, and uh, that's right. hop on trains and ride across the country <laughs> and do whatever you want. You yeah. know, why do all this stuff? Why survive in the first place? So yeah. I think that that number three is your why. Yeah, is, yeah absolutely. Uh, figure out what your why is because without that survival becomes fairly pointless. Yeah. It becomes the driving force in all of this for sure. Next one, I would say, on the priority list of becoming harder to kill is just going to be basic situational awareness. Yeah. And that could be in any environment that you're in, because if you can spot the problem before it occurs, yes. you you've avoided everything in the first yes. place. You've avoided the survival situation in the first yeah. place. Mitigate yeah. risk through his attention to detail. That's right. You know, really? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, you look at an environment like this and, you know, as we've been walking and talking, talking about how beautiful it is, nice crisp morning out here, leaves crunching under your feet. It's absolutely gorgeous, not a cloud in the sky. But as we're walking along, we get down near the creek, and I'm just standing there and appreciating all this beauty. And next thing you know, I get bit by a copper. Ah! Or I get by, bit by a water moccasin. Because, yeah. you know, the, water, the snakes are starting to come out. It's going to be close to 75 degrees today. They might be out. They yeah. may be out now. So who yeah. knows? Uh, point is, you know, if I'm not situation aware, or like understanding the inherent dangers of being in, in, in the woods and, or being in a city or being wherever you are, yeah. And Especially you, when you're around people. Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. yeah. Here, here, I feel like I can almost keep I can control. Relax. Yes, very yeah. much so. I'm yeah. very relaxed here because I understand the inherent dangers of the woods. Yeah. Think fast, move slow. That's yeah. how you move through the woods for the most yeah. part, you know. Um, again, going back to physical fitness and things like that. But uh, yes, stay in situation where your environment um, is is gonna is gonna be a, a big a big deal. Mitigating risk through attention to detail. Right. Yeah, I, and that goes for for all environments that we talked about especially in urban environments when you've got people to worry about because like we said before people are the most dangerous things most dangerous animals on the face of the earth um, and when you're around large quantities of dangerous animals you need to be much more tuned in and, and more situationally aware so you can avoid possible problems and that's something that i'm always teaching my kids and more than, you know, rubbing the sticks together and more than building the fires and the shelters and stuff like that, that is something that I want them to understand. Uh, if they don't learn anything else from me, I want them to learn just to pay attention to the surroundings Yeah, because that is the most likely situation where they're going to get into problems is in, when they're surrounded by dangerous people. So, well, yeah, I mean, if, yeah. you, th if you think about it from a, from a danger kind of perspective, um, by and large, when you're out in this environment, you're in the woods and, and, and then whatnot, there's not a lot of, there's no ill intent from an animal. The like animals don't rove the woods trying to kill you. And I think that's the perception most people have is that they don't want to go into the woods because something out there could, could harm them. And it's, Which it can. Well, of course, but, but yeah. it's, not laying, it's <laughs> yeah. not laying in wait. Right. You know, right, they're not yeah. saying where humans yeah. will lay in wait to hurt other humans. Right. They will exploit your weaknesses. That's nature does that inherently. It, it'll, nature will exploit your weaknesses without yeah. you not even without but you even knowing. But it's it. indifferent. It doesn't it's in, care. That's, that's, it didn't. It yeah. doesn't do it because you're out there, right? Yeah, or or because you look weak, yeah. or because you look like you're exploitable. 
So that's situational awareness. And then this, this all ties back to what we were talking about before, about being somebody that's harder to kill through, through your survival psychology, through your physicality, through all those things. And it's very important when you're out here to understand, you know, or where you're anywhere, you know, situational awareness will save your life, you know, because, because the human element of things is, uh, you know, you don't want to assume all humans are bad or all humans are going to do something against you, but the, the potential is there. You know, animals are indifferent to your, to your uh, presence. I mean, most animals will run away because they don't want to be in contact with you. Yeah. I've seen so, a lot of bears. I've seen a lot of bears' butts running away from that's me. Right, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Certainly, yeah. there are some dangerous animals in yeah. North America and abroad. Yeah. Uh, that, but if you understand the proximity, yeah. you know, I'm not walking up to a pride of lions, you know, and <laughs> in hopes of petting one, you know. Although, although that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> a little, or, a not, little snuggle <laughs> with a pride of lions. Yeah, yeah it will be yeah. better than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I think I think you know the 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 only the most dangerous thing in, 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 uh, in the woods here in North Carolina would probably be a black bear. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, uh, got some cubs that you stumble Poisonous upon. Snakes. Poisonous snakes. Yeah. But again, all those things are indifferent to your presence unless they feel threatened. So if you move through here with situational awareness and a non-threatening yeah. posture, you're, you're less likely. I've been in the woods my whole life and I've never been by, by, by a snake. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that leads me to the point. Yeah. So so situational awareness is something that's practiced and it becomes just a natural thing. People oftentimes in videos are like, don't you worry about snakes? I'm not worried about snakes at all because my whole life I've been walking through woods like this and I look for snakes yes. as I walk. Yes. And when I step over logs, I don't reach my hand into dark places right. that I can't see where a snake might be. I know where the snake habitats yeah. most likely are. Um, and, and, you're, I, and you're looking for them. Yeah, I'm just paying. I'm paying attention <laughs> yeah. to what I'm doing instead of just you know wandering freely doing cartwheels through the woods. Exactly. Right? Exactly. The the knowledge that the threat is there is the situational awareness that keeps you from being bitten. That's it. And and, and that's what we're trying to to say here about that being I think number four. Yeah. Is not sure a, what number on anymore. Yeah, Doesn't matter. Yeah. Is a, is you know is, is situational awareness and, yeah. and in whatever environment you find yourself yeah. in. Yeah. I I uh, I've shared this before on, on other videos, but. Situational awareness is something I'm teaching my kids, and so on Thursdays we we go to jujitsu, and when we when we leave jujitsu with the kids, we walk out into a dark parking lot, right? And I live in a fairly safe community; it's not that big a deal. But I'm trying to instill in my kids basic stuff. We walk out into that dark parking lot. They don't have their heads on a phone or something like that. They're not cutting up and screwing around. They're paying attention. They're looking around and observing the area. When we get when we approach the vehicle, we look around the vehicle. We look under the vehicle, perhaps. We 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 look in the back seat before we get in there. As soon as we get in, we close the doors, lock the doors. Especially my girls, I'm I'm trying to get them just to be, just to make this stuff automatic. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's only paranoia until something bad happens. Right. <laughs> and then yeah. it was just a failure to plan. Yeah. And, and then it turns into I wish I would have. Yeah. And and that's what we're getting at with the situational awareness piece. It's like you don't have to. It, these things can be uh, baked into your everyday deal. It, you don't have to look like a crazy person, right. like climbing all over your car and looking yeah. underneath it and yeah, all those yeah. things. Those are just, if, you, if these things are baked into your everyday routine, it just becomes, that situational awareness just becomes the thing you do. Right. You know? Um, so, I mean, I don't think you have to enjoy life any less by being situational aware. I think you're going to enjoy more of life. Yeah. By understanding so, the inherent dangers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, to some degree, so... Um, it's my responsibility to take care of my family and, and protect my family. I, f I feel like that's my burden to bear, right? Yeah. So, and because it's my burden to bear, I feel like when we're in more dangerous situ situations, I, on that note, I feel like I have to maybe pay a little bit more attention than they do. So I've got to, when we're in a wilderness setting or we're in an urban setting or something like that, while they're, you know, having a good time eating their meal or whatever it is that they're doing, I am a little less engaged and a little bit more paying attention to what's yeah, going on definitely. around me because that's my, that's my responsibility. Yeah. You know and, I mean? and then one of the expectations there on their part too, that dad's more switched on. And that's really the transitional piece between uh, applying ownership to an individual is, is starting to give that responsibility off a little bit more mm -hmm. and explain to them that like, I'm not always going to be with you. Yeah. So these are things that I'm looking for at this present time. So maybe before you just completely disengage from your environment, maybe a set, do a quick assessment to yeah. see if it's okay to disengage a bit yeah. because I don't ever get to turn off. Right. And that's, yeah. and that's exhausting when you, yeah. have a when you have a family. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's something else that I'm trying to instill in my kids is that, you know, the reason that you assume nothing bad is going to happen 
is because nothing bad has happened to you. And Correct. the reason nothing bad has happened to you is most likely because I was there. That's right. Right? <laughs> so, you have no idea how many risks I mitigated. Right. Just by being Just there. by bump steering you a different yeah, direction. And, and you were like, well, why are we going this way? And yeah. it's like, it really doesn't matter. Let's just go this way. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need to understand the why between, you right. know, the, the why on, on why we're doing this yeah. now. And, but one day. But one day. I won't be there. Exactly. So yeah. that's something I'll explain to you later, not right. in the moment. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think number five, really has to be uh, building a community of like-minded people. I mean, and I, and I mean, uh, through leadership and through uh, training and giving people access to the things you know. And, and I'm talking like your immediate community and abroad, and you bring, those, bring, those, uh, bring that type of training and that understanding to bear. So when something does happen bad, you know, you you have a community of people of like-minded people that that know what you know and that you, that think you can lean on them as much as they can lean on you. I used to tell you know, I was telling Jason I used to tell you know guys uh, you know when I was training with the med stuff it's like you know if I get shot make sure the guy that was really actually paying attention in the med class you know takes care of me right you know because nobody cares about med yeah nobody cares yeah. about med until you get get you get hurt right so uh, <laughs> so the thing is is like if if you don't have that skill set and you're not bringing that skill set to the equation, then you're a liability. Yeah. And it's like, don't be a liability. Don't be a liability. I mean, that, yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly right. Don't be a useless man. To be, yeah. Have the skills, have the knowledge required to be helpful. Yeah, to be just, be a, just be a useful individual mm -hmm. by, uh, by focusing on these things. Yeah. Make yourself the strongest person you can be. Make yeah. yourself the most psychologically strong person you can be. Yeah. Be positive about your situation, whatever the situation may yeah. be. And that, that, so building a community, we, we talk about that and a lot of other people talk about building community. And the question always comes up, how do you do that? Like, Correct. how do you meet these people? Well, step one is that you become the man that you want all the other people to be. And if you're not that man, if you're not at least striving to become that man, people around you notice that. Universal law of attraction. Yes, people around you notice that. If you are striving to be more awesome, every single day and learn more, get stronger physically, spiritually, emotionally every single day, then you will attract those people to you. They want to be, they want, there, there's something different about you yes. and they want to be, they want some of that. Yes. Give me some of that. Yeah. It you starts know? with you. If you yeah. want to, if you want to build a community of people that you can count on, it starts with you. Yeah. And people would yeah. say, you know, I would say, uh, you know, create an environment that attracts people and that environment's you. Yeah. Wherever I go, yeah. whatever environment I'm in, I want people to gravitate towards that environment and, and gravitate towards um, the sharing of information and the, the desire to be a better version of themselves. Yeah. I tell people all the time, the Hobo Forge uh, mantra, you know, yes, you know, the, the hobo aspect of the, of the Hobo Forge, you know, like burn shirts and, <laughs> and just kind of live in the persona type thing. But um, I like to look at things for what they can be, not for what they are. And that goes into human beings as well. Yeah. Like I, I can see the best version in people um, because I think I can see the best version of myself that I strive to achieve every day. And um, the forge aspect of things is, is just forging a community, forging a tribe, forging a better human being in myself and, and, and taking other people on that journey with me. So I think we all need to forge a better or try to forge a better version of ourselves daily. And that goes with community and understanding the, the limitations within your own community and urging people to, to, to be better and to work together. And I think that because no one can do it on their own no, for very long. No, and I think we're we're struggling as a society to connect. This is the same for everybody. This is the one. It's like I tell people, you know, the the only utensil that you find in every house around the world is a knife. Yet it's it's looked so down upon everywhere now. You know, knife. I'm as a knife maker. You know, yeah. I struggle with that. So but, stupid. But it's found. It's found in every home, yeah. everywhere yeah. As a, is a knife. And uh, this is that common bond. That thread that 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 strips away race, it strips away monetary, uh, where you are financially, it strips away socioeconomic back. We're all equal in the in the eyes of nature. Yeah. And you put yourself in this environment, and then you can challenge yourself. Everybody's going to you suffer the same challenges here: water, shelter, fire, food, right? And that's what it comes down to. So yeah. when you and yeah, so on that note, so as far as building community, social media doesn't count. No. Social media only counts if you turn it into real, like. He is real. I can touch him. He yeah. is real. Yeah. And I'm speaking to him. That yeah. is a real relationship. 
if your friends are all on social media, they're not really your friends. Like, Correct. Those are at best acquaintances. This is an inspirational collaboration here with yeah. Jason. Being able to finally meet this guy, spend time with him, get inspired even more so in a, in a, in a, in a you're actually working together on this. And, and, and I'm not just watching his content and being inspired. He, we're, ta we're, we're talking, you know, on camera and off camera about how we can inspire each other. And, and then now this has become more of my community. I've now added somebody to that. Uh, yeah. And in, and in, yeah. and because of this one thing, more people of like-minded will hope be so. introduced, right? I really hope so. Yeah. So he's going to come hang out with me and meet my buddies and the guys that I've been working with and the guys that I've, I've suffered with, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and now I trust them and I know what they're capable of and, and vice versa. And that community builds in those ways, but it's by doing and by getting out and actually face-to-face -face communicating with people and, you know, perhaps doing some challenges, some suffering together. Mutual suffering, I think, is a great bond builder. Better than really anything. We type, type two fun. Type two fun. There if you're you not familiar with type two fun, <laughs> type two fun is, well, type one fun is where it's fun all the time. It's fun right. before, during, and after. <laughs> type two fun is only fun after, after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And only that, fun after, and that can only that and and, and I obviously we both speak from a, yeah. a definitely from a uh, and I love that that you've coined that phrase type two fun. I, don't, I, I didn't make that up. Oh. Somebody else did. Well, yeah. I, I yeah. love I love it though. Yeah. You know, it's a, it really is. And, and since I I've been in so many different events, suffering type events, I understand that better than yeah uh, better than most. Do you about, remember type one fun all the time? I, I rarely, I remember, but yeah, I still have friends today, 30 years later that I could talk about type two, type fun. two, type fun. two. 30 yeah. years. Yeah. We could talk about that same suffering yeah. and that, 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 that <laughs> that's, that's right. what makes it so special. Yeah, so, yeah. so you should quest for type two fun yeah. because it will resonate with you. It will make yeah. you a stronger individual. And that's exactly what we're talking about yeah. here. It will make you stronger. It will build those bonds yeah. and, uh, and you'll find yourself attracting like-minded people and and strong people into your community and into your tribe if you will um, all right guys so there's about five things that we feel like are at the top of the list if you want to become harder to kill and you're not working on one of those five things or all of those five things, sure sure you need to be um it doesn't matter the rubbing the sticks together all that stuff comes later and it comes as as you're working on those five things you will develop those skills absolutely per se so yeah, it doesn't matter how fast you are with the draw, you know, all that stuff comes mm -hmm. with work. And those, those, the five things we kind of talked about are very much intertwined. Mm -hmm. Each one bleeds into the next. Exactly. So it's not like they're, they're autonomous, right. you know, I mean, it's like the physical aspect of, of the, uh, of the, you know, the deal is going to, is going to move you into uh, the, the hardened psychology. It's right. going to bleed you into the next, into the next, into the next. And then you're going to find yourself attracting now you've built a community yep. through making yourself harder to kill, make right. yourself, and and you've uh, you've given that gift to other people as well. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Stronger physically, spiritually, emotionally, every single day. That's the goal. Yeah, do that. Absolutely. Be better. Yeah, be better, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please. It helps a lot when you guys just take the second to click the thumbs up. It really helps a lot if you leave some sort of comment. It does not matter what your comment is, really, but I I would appreciate it if you you key in on this this topic and, and maybe if you disagree, that's fine. I would love to hear disagreements, that's fine. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Uh, add to the list, what's what's the next thing? What would be the number six? That would be really great if you'd leave that in the comment section, it really helps the videos out. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Can't wait to see you on the next one.